As you heard, there are always protests in Iran on the anniversary of the hostage crisis, but this year's crowd really was the largest in recent memory, with tens of thousands estimated to be there in front of the U.S. Embassy. CCTV's Nathan King joins us live from the newsroom with more. Nathan, this is uh, pretty interesting stuff, considering that relations between the United States and Iran, which were frosty, are apparently warming. That's right. From coups to the hostage crisis to even being labeled uh, as part of the access of evil. Iranian-U.S. relations have been filled with hostility over the last half of a century. But now we seem to be on the bridge, potentially, of a diplomatic breakthrough and even a nuclear deal. 52 American hostages from the U.S. Embassy in Tehran held for 444 days, a crisis that captivated U.S. public opinion and helped then U.S. President Jimmy Carter lose his re-election bid. The 1979 Iranian Islamic Revolution, which overthrew the American-backed Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, also overturned U.S. foreign policy in Iran, but distrust of the U.S. began much earlier. In 1953, Mohammad Mossadegh, the country's first democratically elected prime minister, was overthrown in a coup that was backed by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. And now the largest anti-American protests on the streets of Tehran that's been seen in years. But these protests come amid Iran's recent moves to reopen dialogue with the West. The election of President Hussein Rouhani led to a phone call between him and U.S. President Barack Obama. The resumption of talks between Iran and the international community over Tehran's disputed nuclear program and the possibility of a nuclear deal could be just weeks away. We've had a diplomatic breakthrough recently, which was unthinkable, certainly 34 years ago, certainly 30 years ago, certainly six months ago, and that has injected an element of hopefulness into the situation. But a resumption of Iranian-U.S. relations is by no means guaranteed. As Monday's demonstrations in Tehran show, there is still a powerful distrust of the U.S. inside the country. And the rifts during the years of the previous administration of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad will be hard to heal. Many Iranians accuse the U.S. of helping fund the protests following Ahmadinejad's disputed re-election of 2009. U.S. allies in the region are nervous too. Saudi Arabia, in part, turned down a United Nations Security Council seat due to the possibility of a U.S.-Iranian breakthrough. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was in Riyadh Monday to smooth the relationship. And America's chief negotiator on the Iranian nuclear issue also gave a rare interview to Israeli TV this weekend in a bid to reassure America's closest ally in the Middle East. Israel's security uh, is bedrock, uh, and there is no closer security relationship than what we have with each other. Meanwhile, it's the Iranian people who stand to benefit the most from any deal. Crippling embargoes have hit everything from the price of food to the cost of a car. Even a limited lifting of sanctions would come as a relief. And Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who is, of course, Iran's uh, supreme religious leader, has also added his weight behind nuclear negotiations in an apparent uh, uh, hit to the hardliners, he quoted on his personal website that they ha the, the negotiators have a difficult mission and no one has the right to weaken an official who is doing his job. So you can see the full weight of the Iranian establishment behind these negotiations, even though we see these demonstrations in large numbers on the streets. Mm, interesting stuff. Uh, Nathan, uh, those nuclear talks resume this week. Could yeah. we see a deal, even an interim one? Yeah, I, I think that's where all the money is, is on an interim deal. Some sort of confidence-building measure uh, whereby Iran would suspend uranium enrichment or agree to enrich at lower levels than the breakout uh, quantity of 20% enriched uranium where it's easy to make a nuclear weapon uh, in return for some sort of limited sanctions relief. But uh, when Sherman also said that they would keep in place sanctions on the oil industry in Iran, and that is a potential deal breaker for Tehran, who needs that much needed foreign currency uh, to re-energize their economy. So there is still a lot of differences as we head into the talks in the next couple of days. Nathan King, live for us in our newsroom. Thanks so much. Thank